De-escalation is an important technique to manage conflict behaviour in clients with mental health issues. There are some guiding principles when de-escalating conflicts. Use active listening skills. Acknowledge and validate their emotions. Be empathetic and build rapport with the client. Be directive. Communicate clearly what you want the client to do and set boundaries. This video looks at three common scenarios to offer quick tips on how you can be compassionate while providing effective care and intervention. Some clients with mental health issues demonstrate aggressive behavior, while others exhibit symptoms of hallucination, agitation, and suspicion. When you encounter a client insisting that they believe in imaginary situations, how do you remain honest yet tactful at the same time? Hallucinations, agitation, and suspicion are the result of mental conditions that affect someone's interpretation of sights and sounds. For these individuals, hallucinations can turn normal, everyday situations into terrifying experiences. Hello, Madam Tan. Are you Madam Tan? Hi, I'm Mr. Padma, and this is Miss Elaine. We are from Family Service Centre. How do you know my name? What do you want? Town Council call us saying that your neighbours are complaining that you have stacked up so all these things along the corridor I knew You've got it. your camera and all that Those neighbours, they are in the same gang and so are you We are not part you of any gang You think I trusted gang. that for so we long? Can I trust any... anybody? I'm you a guys social worker I've seen those messages that you have put on TV Where got messages? What messages? Oh, There's no messages What is shh? Why? Who's laughing at you? Asking me not to talk to the two of we you. We don't see anybody. Oh! I don't hear anybody laughing. I know you all have gang members hiding behind this the plants. This plant, this plant, it's only a potted them. plant. There's nobody here. We Madam are Tan, listen. I'm, 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 I'm only trying to help you, Madam Tan. Just go away. Uh. I think you're not well. We have to see a doctor. No, nobody believes me. I can me. bring you and Just see a go doctor. Just go away. Go away. Go away. Go away. Calm down. Calm down. I'm telling Don't you. Don't ask me to calm down. Have to I'm you. not crazy, if not, okay? You get into trouble. Go away! <laughs> Madam Tan, don't, don't go away. Come back here. When responding to hallucinations, determine first whether the hallucination is causing danger to others. If the behavior is not dangerous, there may not be a need to intervene. If the hallucination is making the person upset or frightened, react calmly with reassuring words and a comforting touch. You may want to respond with, don't worry, I'm here. Hello, Madam Tan. Oh. Madam Tan? Hi, my name is Mr. Padma from Family Service Centre. This is my colleague, Miss Aline. How do you know my name? Ah? I know your name. What do you want? Town Council have got some concerns, <laughs> okay, about all these boxes and all these things stretched up and you got your camera and your locks and all that. So, we wanted to come down and see how we can help you. It's my neighbours, right? They're all part of the same gang. And so are you. I'm not in a I gang. I know what I'm you guys are up to. Worker. I've seen those messages that you're put on TV. What messages, Madam Tan? I cannot trust anybody. I, I, we don't have any messages. Go but away. There's I'm, nobody I can trust. I'm very sorry to hear that you think that the neighbours and police are against you. What happened? Shh. Stop talking who's, to you. Who's laughing, Madam Tan? No, you all have gang members hiding behind these plants. Can I move this spot to show you there's nobody here? No, no, no. no. Just take a look. I'm just doing this. Take a look <laughs> here. There's nobody here, Madam Tan. Look. There's nobody. It's very safe. You, Madam Tan, it's... it's but I still I, don't trust you. It's okay, but I know you're going through all this pain and you're experiencing stress. Is there anybody who comes and visits you? Who comes to take care of you? Who? My niece, my niece. Very good. Two days time, I'll call you and me and my colleague will come here. Can you ask your niece to come here too? So that we can sit down and discuss what's going on. Why are you so upset? We'll help you. Maybe we can see a doctor. Okay, don't worry about all this. We'll take care of you. Here you go. This is my card. If there's anything, you can call me. Ah, You can call me. Okay, if there's anything, let me know. I will help you. Okay, take care. Take care of yourself. Here are a few tips on responding to hallucinations and suspicion. Acknowledge the feelings behind the hallucination. You might say, 
It sounds as if you're worried or I know this is scary for you. Be honest. If the person asks, do you see him? You may answer with, I know you see something, but I don't see it. Check for sounds, shadows and reflections that might be misinterpreted. Cover or remove mirrors. Always ensure that there is an exit point for personal safety. We hope this scenario has given you some ideas on how to support clients with hallucinations, agitation and suspicion. In the next scenario, we'll look at how to support clients with aggressive behaviour. In this second scenario, we'll look at how to support clients with aggressive behaviours, which may be a result of mental health conditions such as paranoid schizophrenia and may worsen without medication. Individuals may become isolated, withdrawn and restless and exhibit strong resistance to treatment or admission to a healthcare facility. It's important for the care professional to understand the likely causes of aggression and learn ways to calm the client. I am not a mental patient. Why am I here? Your family brought you here because you have been unwell. You let me go now. Why are you listening to my family? They think I'm crazy and they're trying to lock me up in some mental hospital, you know or not? You haven't seen a doctor and you haven't been taking your medication. That's why you're feeling so frustrated. I already told you. I'm not crazy. Why should I take medication and see the doctor? My family is the one who should see the doctor. I'm perfectly fine. Please calm down. And, and they are lying about me. I tell you, I'm really very busy. I just want to go now. I will relay your concerns later to the doctor. Please calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. You're not listening to me. I'm listening. I am perfectly I'm listening. fine. I just want to go now. Stop shouting at me. I'm just doing my job. If not, I'll call security. You call security now. I think I'm scared. Lah. I already said, let me go now! Aggression usually isn't personal, although it may sometimes feel that way. Don't react to aggression with aggression, but instead, try to be flexible if someone is being uncooperative or angry. Be sure to clarify your messages. Use direct explanations and be specific in describing the current and desired behaviour. The Free Mental Acute Arousal Scale is a helpful framework to de-escalate conflict. I'm not a mental patient. Why am I here? Hi Madam Lee. Your family brought you here for a review because they are worried about you. You just let me go now. And don't listen to my family, okay? They think I'm crazy. And they want to lock me up in some mental hospital, you know or not? I hear you. I know that you are really upset and it sounds really, really awful. But maybe in the meantime, I could offer you some water to cool you down first. How are you feeling right now? I already said, I'm not crazy. Why should I take medication and see the doctor? My family is the one who should see the doctor. I'm perfectly fine. And they are lying. I have so many things to do now and I just want to go home. So you'd rather be at home and this place is not the place you want to be? It's hard when everyone just gangs up on you. It makes me very angry. I'm perfectly fine. Do you understand or not? I hear you. I can see that you're really upset. And I'm so sorry that you're feeling this way. But don't worry, I'm here for you. I will relay your concerns to the doctor later. For now, why don't you just have a drink and relax while we wait? Okay. Here are a few tips on responding to aggressive behaviours. Pay attention and listen attentively. Try to understand the reason for the aggression. Why is there pain, fear or frustration? Use calming gestures and tones to help the client feel safe and unthreatened. Treat them with respect. Reserve judgment. Gently offer help and remain friendly and empathetic. Focus on feelings. Make room to discuss and explore emotions that the client has raised. Give the client ample time and space for silence and cooling off if needed. Always remain safe. Remove dangerous objects or back away slowly if the behavior is threatening. 
call for help if the client becomes a danger to themselves or to others. We hope you've picked up some useful de-escalation tips from this scenario. In the third and final segment, we'll look at clients with suicidal ideation and self-harm behavior. Working with clients that have mental health conditions can sometimes be unpredictable and demanding. Care professionals have to exercise their utmost patience and compassion. In this final case scenario, we will explore strategies to support clients with suicidal ideation and self-harm behavior. Suicidal threats must always be taken seriously and never dismissed. Clients who express suicidal ideation will usually give both verbal and non-verbal warning signs. Hi, Madam Ng. Madam Ng, Padma here, social worker. How are you? Two medical appointments, you didn't show up. Hospital is asking for you. Is everything okay? Are you okay? You again. It's all your fault. You never help me with the money. How to say, doctor, you tell me. Madam Ng, you must understand. It's going to take time for the money to come. You must be patient. You don't want to help me. Uh. Just say it. Oh, I know. You have to see me die, is it? I jump for you to see. Uh. Madam Ng, stop. Madam Ng, listen here. No need to drama. Help is coming. Okay, so be patient. If you cannot help me, Next time, don't bother to come back, you useless man. To de-escalate situations with suicidal ideation, it is key to focus on the client's emotions and well-being, empathizing with their situations and difficulties. For clients with a history of risk concerns and non-compliance, it is advisable to conduct home visit in pairs. One person may be the main therapist, while the other serves as the safety officer. Medibung. Hello, Madam Ng. Hi, Padma here, social worker. How are you? Madam Ng, we are very concerned for you. You didn't turn up for your two medical appointments. Are you okay? What happened? It's all your fault. You never helped me with the money like you said. How to see the doctor like that? You tell me. Ah. Oh, I'm very sorry, Madam Ng. I didn't know that you haven't got the money yet. But the money will come in definitely. I know you. it's difficult for you, but Let's sit down and talk about it so that we can see how fast we can get it. It's too late already. I just want to die now. I jump. Madam Ng, Madam Ng, listen, please. I'm very serious. I really care for you. We will help you. Let's go into the house, take a seat. I assure you, we'll get things done. Please, can, can we go in? Please, come. Come, let's go in and sit down. I'll, I'll help you. Come. Okay. Don't worry, yeah. we are here for you. Your medication has run well out. We have to go to the hospital to see the doctor and take more medication. But not to worry, me and my colleague will be following you. Can I call the hospital now to fix you an appointment? Or do you want to call yourself? No, no, no. No, no, can, can you please call for me? Sure. I'm very sure. scared that they'll, they'll no, scold me. No worries, no worries. I'll do that for you. I'll call them now, okay? Right, sure. Hello, this is a social worker, Mr. Padma here. Right, this is with regards to my client, Madam Ng. Right, she has run out of medication and needs to see the doctor. When's the best time we can come in? Tomorrow. Madam Ng, are you available tomorrow, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m.? We can go together to hospital to see the doctor and take medication. Are you okay? Right? Right, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, 10 o'clock is good. I'm bringing her in. Sure, thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Madam, tomorrow, your appointment is fixed at 10 o'clock. Me and my colleague will come over at 9 o'clock to pick you up. Right? And then we'll go and see the doctor, take your medication, and then you can come back home. Do not worry, we are here for you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Here are a few tips on managing high-risk clients who self-harm or develop suicidal ideation. Slow down your speech and use a calm but firm voice. Make your approach visible. Use a non-threatening posture with your palms wide open. Allow the client to maintain their personal space. Before providing information, acknowledge the client's emotions of pain, fear or helplessness. 
Attend to the client's basic needs such as food, shelter, pain, or discomfort. Use we and I statements instead of you statements to calm somebody down. Avoid defensive words like but. If the client's risk is volatile, you may call the police to stand by. Ensure the client's home is safe to enter and ensure that your exit is not blocked. Your role as a care professional is extremely significant in the lives of clients with mental health conditions. We hope that these case scenarios have empowered and equipped you with the tips and strategies to manage future challenging situations.